So welcome to the hallmarks of design thinking. Here we're going to look at some of the key elements that distinguish design thinking from other problem solving methods. The reason why we love design thinking is it truly helps us unleash the creative potential of all of our people. Uh, we're firm believers in innovation being for everybody everywhere. The great thing about design thinking is it helps sort of bring people into innovation in three core areas which we believe matter. One is it builds capability, it gives people the skills, they learn the process, the tools, they know how to contribute. The second is it creates engagement. So people see that their voice is being lended to the innovation process and it really sort of energizes them in terms of saying, hey, I've made an impact here. And of course the third area is they actually get to experience contributing to co-creation in a very real and tangible way. So in terms of looking at these methods, um, what we do is in our program of design thinking, typically we deliver this across two days in person in a typical workshop setting, but now that we're doing all of this work remote, um, what we do is we take all of the modules and we sort of break them up into sort of two hourly uh, installments and we deliver about eight of these two hourly installments across sort of three, four or five days depending on the intensity of the journey. Um, and this really um, coupled with some other tools such as Zoom and Mural as well as Google Drive allow us to sort of create a, a very engaging experience in, in a remote and online world setting. Now in terms of our specific program structure uh, you could have a program spread right across a full week depending on what else is going on in people's lives um, but we also recommend that you could sort of compress this a little bit further and so we have had some deliveries where what was typically a two-day program gets delivered over three days of course screen time can be very draining and so we don't want to pin, spend sort of eight hours a day sitting at a screen um, and so sort of at most we have four hours being sort of recommended so typically in terms of our program, we start off with the hallmarks of design thinking and then we sort of overview the, the sort of core process and then spending some significant time around discovery methods or empathy methods, uh, innovation challenges, ideation, uh, prototyping and testing. So that's sort of the, 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 the program as it, as it looks. In terms of the sort of key fundamental of design thinking, what we want to impress upon um, our learners is that design thinking is about confronting your your thinking and it's about challenging the blind spots that you may have in terms of how you may sort of completely overlook certain types of solutions. This is sort of one of our first hallmarks and in, 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 in one of five, so confronting and over, overcoming biases in our thinking. We also want to look at how a new solution functions rather than focusing too much on the format. Um, we feel that form is, is something that should come later. We put people at the heart of solutions. This is really a central uh, tenant of design thinking. And then we also reframe the problem. So it's through new understanding around what the real problem is, is that we feel we can sort of get some forward momentum towards new solutioning. It's all about experimenting and prototyping. We cannot predict which kinds of ideas are really going to work, or are going to get us to where we want to go. And so we need to tinker and try things as, as we go along. Now here's an example in terms of how we can confront our blind spots. Uh, so imagine that you've been tasked with the design of a space. This is an insurance company. It's a typical sort of insurance branch that you may see in the downtown. And if you think about how our typical um, conventional wisdom in terms of how we might approach this, we typically say, what does an insurance branch look like? Um, what would I typically find in this space? Now, how can I make some improvements with regards to that? Uh, the challenge of that, of course, is that you end up with a solution that's a bit like the existing solution, maybe with some uh, refinements and amendments. We have to confront our conventional wisdom and say, what are some of the ideas that we might be missing? What are some of the things that we have completely overlooked in our uh, search for a new idea here? 
Here's a solution. This is from ING Direct. Uh, they completely opened up their minds in terms of what a new solution could be, and it was through their understanding about how customers really don't enjoy going down to the insurance company that they were able to completely reimagine it. They borrowed from a cafe sort of example and setting and said, people love to hang out in these kinds of environments. Now, why couldn't we create such an inviting environment but allow us to deliver the functionality that we normally have in an insurance brand. And those people can speak to their consultant, they can check up on their policies, they could even buy a new policy here. And so obviously, um, you know, a very different looking environment to the typical insurance branch. So how we avoid becoming a victim of our blind spots and sort of rehashing the same old ideas over and over again is we start with people. We put people at the heart of solutions and we say, um, how can we understand people? How can we empathize them? And so this uh, module on discovery thinking, which comes in sort of right at the first part of our program, is an essential anchoring point so that we can sort of start off on the right foot and say, what is this problem that we need to solve for our customer? How can we get a new understanding? And, and then sort of frame that problem and head off in a completely new direction. Now, in terms of how we do this, uh, we're going to look a little bit at some of the methods, but one of the key tools that we use is a uh, empathy map and we use a journey map. We interview customers, we really spend some time trying to understand who they are, and then we distill this learning in these canvases, which we can use online using tools such as Mural, and get everyone to contribute what their thinking and f um, thoughts are around how the customer is viewing the world. So that's all we have for you in terms of the hallmarks. Um, if you're interested to know more about our design thinking practice and our training methods, head over to invitroinnovation.com where you can learn about some of our case studies. We've been working in this area for eight years. If you're interested in the remote delivery of these kinds of programs, whether they be workshops or seminars, then head over to everywhereinnovators.com.